So recently, I was looking through some draft classes, trying to figure out what my next video is going to be about, and I came across something really interesting. It's about draft picks, particularly the number 2 overall pick in the NBA draft. Here's a cool stat for you guys. Up until the day of this video, there have only been two number 2 picks who made an all-star team since the 2007 draft. Kevin Durant was the second pick that year and has obviously become an all-star. The only other number 2 pick was Victor Oladipo from the 2013 draft who made the all-star team in 2018. Over the last 10 years or so, no other number 2 pick has made the team. And frankly, looking at all these guys, most of them are not even close to being an all-star. In fact, there's a handful of busts on this list too. D'Angelo Russell probably has the best chance to be an all-star in the near future, or maybe Jabari Parker, but the East is stacked with young talent and it's going to be hard unless they have a great season and their team does really well. But yeah, the point is, since the 07 draft, there's only been two number two picks who've developed into all-stars, which honestly blows my mind. There's a ton of guys whose careers have been very underwhelming, like Evan Turner, Michael Beasley, Hashim Thabit, Derek Williams, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, that's a lot of disappointment. When I first realized this though, I just thought it was a coincidence, to be honest. Cause you know, sometimes you could get a string of underwhelming players at one spot, it just seems like bad luck, especially since it's number 2. At number 2, you expect the pick to develop into a player who's really good, and that hasn't been the case even if you go back further. Even the number 3 pick has had a lot more success historically, with more stars and better players at that spot. However, looking back through NBA history, it seems like it's not a coincidence. Historically, the number 2 overall pick has always been underwhelming, it's not a secret anymore. 1972, Bob McAdoo was the second pick and eventually became a Hall of Famer. Since then, there have only been four other number two picks who are in the Hall of Fame, just four. In over 40 years of NBA history, only four players drafted at that number two spot have made it into the Hall of Fame, and those four players are Isaiah Thomas, Gary Payton, Alonzo Mourning, and Jason Kidd. That's pretty ridiculous, now obviously this is not including guys like Kevin Durant who is definitely going to be in the hall by the time he retires, but still, that makes 5 at most. The only other guy with a chance to make the hall would be Lamarcus Aldridge, the second pick in 2006, but that's not set in stone. As you all know, the Basketball Hall of Fame is relatively easy to get into compared to other sports, so having just 4 Hall of Famers in that time period is insane. I'm pretty sure there's been way more busts than stars selected there. I mean, I didn't even mention guys like Darko Milicic, Stromile Swift, or Jay Williams, whose, um, well, his career was kinda crazy, you know, with the whole motorcycle incident. He was amazing at Duke, but it's unfortunate that that accident ruined his career. I also came across this article by Roland Beach on 82games.com. He analyzed every single draft pick from 1989 to 2008 and found out the average of their stats and then gave them a rating. According to this, the number 2 pick had an average rating that was lower than both the number 3 and number 4 picks. They also averaged fewer points than even the number 5 pick. And this is like 20 years of data. That's like, what, one third of NBA history or something like that? So this is definitely relevant. That's really interesting, and keep in mind, this only went up to 2008. There's been a ton of busts after that which I talked about earlier, so the average would be even lower now. But, I will say that, although there haven't been many elite, superstar level players, there still were a bunch of multiple-time all-stars and solid players at number 2. Guys like Steve Francis, Tyson Chandler, Marcus Camby, Terry Cummings, LaMarcus Aldridge, they've all carved out some great careers. But for the most part, a lot of players underachieved. Some others got plagued with injuries like Sam Bowie, Antonio McDice, and a couple others. And then you got Len Bias, who probably could have been a Hall of Famer if he didn't die. So what is the reason for number 2 picks being historically underwhelming? Surely there has to be some reasons to this. It can't just all be a coincidence, right? Well, I guess it could be a slight coincidence, but I think there are some reasons for it. This is what I think. The first reason is that, in a lot of NBA drafts, there is usually only one player who's the consensus number one overall pick, while everyone else below them from like 2 through 5 are usually similar talent-wise. Obviously, there are some exceptions, but in most cases I've found, that's usually how it is. 
Some examples of drafts where there was a consensus number one pick included the 2003 draft with LeBron, 2012 with Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns in 2015, Shaq in 1992, John Wall in 2010, Blake Griffin in 2009, Tim Duncan, the list is pretty big. There's been a ton of consensus number one picks. Now, you might be wondering, how does this affect the number two pick? Well, after the consensus number one pick is taken already, the teams who pick at number two have a variety of players to choose from, but nobody knows who's going to be the best out of all of them. A lot of times, teams also like to take a risk at that number two spot because they feel compelled to do so. Because they already know the lottery balls did not bounce their way and they missed out on that consensus number one, so maybe they try to overcompensate and take their chances by drafting a player who may or may not pan out, but has high potential. A great example here is the 2003 draft. LeBron was obviously the consensus number one pick, but then after that, it was kinda hard to tell. The Pistons decided to draft Darko Milicic, thinking that he'd be the next generational big man because of his size and skill sets. However, it was a huge, huge risk at the time, and everyone knew it too. They could've went with Melo or Bosch as the safer options, but they decided to swing for the fences, and it didn't work out. A similar situation happened in the Anthony Davis draft, but to a lesser degree. Michael Kidd Gilchrist was selected at number 2, right ahead of Bradley Beal. It made more sense for the Bobcats to draft Beal because he was a solid shooter in college and he paired well with Kemba. And I remember back then, most mock drafts I saw said that Beal should go second. But the Bobcats decided to take a risk by drafting MKG, a more raw player with better physical tools and a higher upside and they had hopes of developing him and fixing his jump shots. But the problem with drafting raw players with high potential is that very few of them actually reach that potential. And if they never reach that potential, they're pretty much just gonna end up as decent role players or out of the NBA. Up until now, it doesn't look like MKG improved drastically and he'd probably never reach his perceived potential. On the other hand, Bradley Beal, who was picked right after MKG, has been a good player right when he entered the NBA. This seems to be a trend for a lot of number 2 picks in recent years. I feel like most of them recently are risky, while the picks below them seem to be safer. I don't know, I mean, it just seems that way. Anyway, the second reason for number 2 picks not doing so well is because it could be a mentality thing. There's more pressure when you get selected at number 1, there's no question about that. But most of the time, that pressure fuels players to play better. There are many players who thrive under pressure, and they like having that weight on their shoulders. But if a player gets drafted at number 2, they feel a lot less pressure to perform because they're not supposed to be the best player in the draft. The media doesn't criticize number 2 picks as much as number 1 picks, and if you look through history, very few number 2 picks who become busts are barely even talked about. Evan Turner was drafted at number 2, right behind John Wall, and he's had a pretty lackluster career so far. In my opinion, he's a clear bust, but he's talked about way less than guys like Andrea Bargnani or Kwame Brown, who were number 1 picks. The same goes for guys like Derek Williams, Michael Beasley, and Hashim Thabit. They're all number 2 picks who busted, but they're not the first guys that come to mind when you think about NBA busts. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that number 2 picks in general do not feel the same type of pressure as number 1 picks, but at the same time, they also don't have that chip-on-your-shoulder underdog mentality that the players drafted below them have. It's like they're stuck in a weird middle ground where the expectations are high, but not high enough. So I mentioned Michael Beasley and Derek Williams just now. In their respective drafts, there was a legit argument for them being number 1 picks, but they both ended up behind Rose and Kyrie. As a result, throughout their NBA careers, they did not really play with the same type of urgency or pressure. If Beasley or Williams went number one instead, I feel like they'd have more pressure to play better, and as a result, they'd work on their games more and become better. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case for most of their careers. But that's just my guess, they could have had the same attitude even if they went number one, who knows. Anyway, that's all folks, the second overall pick has always been a curious case. I knew that in recent years, most of them have been underwhelming, but when I looked back even further, I was shocked it's been generally underwhelming for the last 40 years. Why do you think number 2 picks have been underwhelming over the years? Is it just a coincidence? Personally, I don't think so. I think there are legit reasons why they've been worse than the number 3, number 4, or number 5 picks. 
Let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time.